uh we're live okay <laughs> and just like Hi. that we're alive what's up everyone <laughs> happy sunday happy birthday frank frazetta yes his, his almost birthday's birthday. the ninth. yeah his birthday's almost on the birthday. ninth but yeah but, uh, birthday, early birthday week birthday yeah yeah, yeah like birthday it. week that's our <laughs> <laughs> you always got to celebrate the week just in case the day don't turn out right for sure yeah for sure. yeah so we have a special guest today we're back we we actually had like a two-month um sort of not intended hiatus but but kelsey was busy working and then um you know i had to finish the year so um but but uh we had we had promised that we would have Sarah Frazetta back on for Frank's birthday and we did it but we have actually a really cool thing going on which is Friday the museum opened the new museum yep yep um it, we well we reopened a location so my grandparents bought this building in 1995 in Boca Grande Florida they were um planning to be snowbirds here in Florida they fell in love right. with the island and they were like, we have to have a museum in Florida. We don't want to go back to the winter as like, sure. you know, this, and as you know, now, like winter, winter is not fun. But um, so, yeah, they found this building, which is you can see it's like really artsy and, and the ground. This is all yeah, um, cool. actually ha hand placed shells um, by the family that owned it before them. So they fell in love with this building and they were like, this this is it. Unfortunately, my grandpa fell really ill in 1996 right. with his uh, major stroke. Right. And he had to go back to Pennsylvania and and then, you know, in 2001, he opened the location on the property. So this is a reopening of the location from 1996. Okay. Nice. Yeah, well, I can imagine Frank out there in a loincloth and a spear. Yeah, it just looks <laughs> <laughs> he, he loved Boca Graham because he I mean, he loved the palm trees, but he really loved the pelicans. Like, I mean, he was obviously an animal guy. Yeah. And he just loved seeing like the, the little lizards that we had sure. here, the pelicans, just the dolphins like he he any any nature that's what he would be immersed into yeah yeah it's funny because people always ask like artists you know who are you influenced by and and honestly for me like if i go to like balboa park which is a real beautiful park here just mm -hmm. seeing the, the grass and the trees and the sky that stuff yeah. gets me really excited to be creative i can see yeah, it through my sure. window just fine <laughs> where are you again kelsey i'm in baton rouge louisiana Okay, Wait, so I'm not you, quite yeah. south. Neither of you have to experience winter then. The people no. on live might be in the snowstorms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm spoiled. In we're San all Diego. lucky. Yeah, yeah, we're all lucky right now. Sorry, guys. Anyone watching that's not in the paradise. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry. so sh show show them the gate. The gate and the um the gargoyles is like, okay, like uh, so, from the inside. Yeah, blow her up yeah, from her the shot. inside. So there's oh, a yeah. gargoyle, and here's, well, let here's me, the I'm other gonna, gargoyle. I'm gonna blow you up. I'm gonna give you full screen. Yeah, take okay. us on a tour yeah, here, gonna, virtual I'm tour. Gonna, yeah, I'll do a little tour. So you can see we have little um identity crisis. We nice. have the a Art Gallery as the sign, but we're calling it the museum. It's you know whatever you want to call it. So it's just <laughs> the all glory of Frank Frazetta. So come on in. We do have a little tour going on right now. So you guys are just going to be with with other beautiful nice. Frazetta fans who are it, seeing the original art. Is the sure. bar out there open? Look like a bar. <laughs> the bar in the bar. Yeah. <laughs> saw the bar. Ooh. My mom. Nice. My mom has a lot of fun, and she wants to, you know, always be the hostess with the, mo the, the yeah. hostess. So yeah. I'm going to take you guys over here first, um, just so I because this is a small space, yeah. but um. So I don't want to get in the way, but right here is his early work. It was the snowman. Oh, this so was good. his um, first published work. Oh, and then so we have awesome. a disturbance. Sorry about that. No, 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 no. don't worry about it. Somebody's getting, getting too close to the like, art. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. that was a really annoying phone um, ringer. So, mom, your phone. Okay, yeah, please. Oh, so, so, cool. so here's the snowman. So this was his first published work in Tally Ho. And my mom actually inherited this this first splash page, That's and then so this came up for auction at Heritage, and she put the two together, and she was like, "Well, I need the interior for the you know for the cover." Yeah. So this whole wall is dedicated to the snowman. How old was he when he did that? He was sixteen. Wow. He, I bet he was he was sixteen when it was published. He was working on it when he was fifteen. Oh my god. Which is That's it's so just good. incredible. Like. <laughs> You see Fang. I mean, was his character just that line eating. work? That's so yes. good. insane. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's good. really, really, really beautiful. 
so so people don't, may not understand that a lot of the art that sold over the years before frank passed away you guys are actively trying to acquire pieces back that you, that are affor affordable enough or you know what i mean or yes the, that's yes i i have a couple of my pieces that i've acquired yeah. that we've talked about in here but yes we we want to buy back the favorites and you know she keeps coming in my space. No, don't even <laughs> I'm moving yeah. again. This All is right, a guys. virtual experience. <laughs> this is the virtual. You're getting the raw experience. Yeah. It, it, um, it's not. It's actually not distracting at all. So don't even okay. sweat it. Seriously. Okay. Cool. So I'm gonna sit down for a second and I'll tell yeah, you about absolutely. that. So, so my grandparents, um, they always sold art. They actually sold three pieces of original original art just to buy this building. Right. They bought, I, I think they sold like 10 pieces to get their estate in Pennsylvania. Obviously, like the poster business and like, yeah. the calendars, like it's a lucrative business, but not to buy a no, beautiful sure. piece of real estate on the water and then and then a beautiful building downtown Boca Grande. So yeah. they were selling pieces that they weren't really like attached to. And, you know, basically sure. whatever would get fetch the highest price, to be honest. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of art in private collections that then comes back up to heritage. And that's something that we would love to keep expanding this museum. And un unfortunately, some of the most prized possessions have been sold at some point. Um, mm. My mom has sold a few and I just keep encouraging her to not do that and, and right. acquire them back. So there, well, how many do you have in this collection right now? Let me count them. Let's, we have uh -huh. oils. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So we have 14 oils on the wall. Um, and then we have about 10 watercolors and oh. a few pet and inks mixed in. So right above me, you'll see this this one. Okay, so we have the Christ. He my painted grandpa that did that. Yep, my grandpa painted that. Okay, let me... Uh, for, for Ellie, right? He painted that for your paint, grandma. Yep. Yeah, he painted this one for an, uh, my grandma for an Easter present. And wow. you know she would she would commission him to paint things for her holidays. That was if she didn't if she didn't have that she'd be very angry. You know she would yeah. always have her gift. And then <laughs> and okay again, it was an, hey, it mom, was an apology the music. <laughs> it was an apology for all the naked girls that he painted throughout. Yeah. The <laughs> yes, ex exactly. <laughs> so look at this piece. This is really this is actually oh, I love that speak, piece. speaking of acquiring art back. My mom oh, bought this great. piece from i think this was in the dave winowitz collection okay. um, that he sold in 2015. Sure. and this was this is really funny can you see the details can you see the writing yeah what does it say it says my god it, what does a, it say? Uh, my god a genuine honest to goodness crankle girl oh, now, right. so <laughs> so this is really funny he spelled roy crinkle's name wrong and that's oh. his best friend but you know right. that's just my did he do that on in, purpose? He was probably poking he, him a little. <laughs> he probably did it on purpose. Just, you know, and that's Roy up in the corner. And then there, there's this crankle girl on, on the pot. I don't yeah. really understand that. It might just be a little dated for me. I don't I don't know. Is that an envelope or is that like a postcard or something he sent? Um, no, it's just a little artist artist leaf piece hmm. of paper. Just Sometimes they, they would do. trim they would trim the, the negative space off the paper, Kelsey. Like if it could have been drawn on something bigger and then they'll cut it ah. down sometimes. Yeah. Well, you know, my grandpa wasn't big on buying new art supplies, so whatever right. was like laying around, that's what he would <laughs> sure, he sure. would use. So this piece is really, really incredible. Oh, I love Can you that. See one. that okay? I yeah. yeah. Right. So this piece is actually he was he was sixteen when he did this. Oh, yeah. And to be able to like understand that like depth perception and tell a story like he did, I mean, it's it's just really incredible. I think I he can't did, do I that think, now. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'll never be able to do this. But it, it is, it was so, it's so genius. There's a little bit of wear on it. You can see, obviously, throughout the years how he improved with his colors. Like, I mean, this mm, is, sure. this is a, a little is, uh, amateur for Frazetta, but no, I mean, no, 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 like, that's, I, you know, oldie. yeah, it's, it's really, really spectacular. This, like, this little guy under here with the blanket. I mean, well, he did the back of the guy's head too, and that, that's a hard yeah. shot to do for so it, young. It was, it, it, and I have I have a couple other little uh, goodies to show you too that no one's ever seen before. You got the self portrait. Um, so, yes, the self portrait. Wow. Um, sorry with the phone. That's a prize right wow. there. Holy shit! That... I didn't realize it was so big. I actually always thought it was a little bit smaller than that. Um, I mean, it's like I'll put my hand up for reference. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My but hand. it's 
it's wow the colors on it are so vibrant in person or like the They're, way that we're seeing it now i've never seen it that colorful yeah you can't we and i mean even with like our printing process like right. we, we, we have the print operation on frazetta girls and looking at the originals again i'm like all right we have to step it up a little bit with right. color matching because yeah it's it's so hard though his palette was just so oh, incredible man. that you know, oh, technology so doesn't even recognize it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just so out of this world. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so so over here, we have oh. this Rogue Roman. Oh, my God. That's great. Now, I'm going to try to get close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. God, it's still shiny from the, uh, what is it, lacquer or something? What do they put on that? Yeah. So he really, uh, and you guys know this, but he really um, thinned his oils. Mm, and right. he used a ton of turpentine. Oh, my God. And I love that. Yeah, there's the Oak Oakdale Affair. That was the cover. We obviously the colors on that one are beautiful. Yeah, this one. I mean, to see them in person, we're just so inspired. Again, I mean, it's like you know, we have this online community, which is amazing. Like, oh, Ron is our online layers like, downward to earth. <laughs> yeah, I love this one too. The, it's it's very surreal. Like the colors are almost um, uh, like Bernie Fuchs. Psychedelic. Oh, Bernie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah, this that is one of. Well, you guys know that he he won an award for this one, and obviously this is like one of his most abstract pieces. I I think I might have told you guys this before, and I'm sorry if I'm re repeating myself, but that one was always oh. hanging in their house, okay. and I remember that one scaring me as a child because I was oh. like, why does why doesn't like that that creature that it almost looks like an like an orangutan why yeah, does it yeah. have eyes? Yeah, it doesn't have eyes and its claws. It was spooky. <laughs> so there here oh. we have Dancer yeah. from Atlantis. Oh, oh, I love that great. one too. This was the repaint. He did two versions of this. So there is another, and, and I don't know, you guys might know this better than I, I do, but um, with oil, does the other oil live under it still? Like if you were it, to go and take the first layer I think off? so. I think it's always yeah. wet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> don't rub it too tight. You don't rub yeah, it too don't. hard. Yeah, it'll yeah. come off. Now I, can you see oh, this Oh man, one? look at that. Nice. Oh, I love that piece too. So that's the you original. You love them all, Rich. Come on. I yeah, do. you love you. Love, <laughs> <laughs> we have the original Beauty and the Beast. This is his ink, which oh, is yeah, just. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love oh, those. Oh, this yeah, my going favorite. Yeah, going real close on that one. Oh, my God. It's beautiful. His ink work is the best. It's so good. Oh, my God. That that style influenced so many artists. I mean, you, so you wouldn't have. I, I mean, they all said it. If In the Painting with Fire documentary, I mean, Dave Stevens, Bernie Wrightson. Um, Kaluta, we're all talking about like like that they never would have done what they did without seeing that type of work from Frank. Yeah, no, it's it's the the way that he used the pen to like create these strokes. I I looking at the work, it's like what he did was it was like pure confidence and genius. Like every yeah. that's how you can tell like a Frazetta. You can just see and a lot of artists, I mean a lot of artists have the confidence and sure. the understanding of it, but but with him specifically, it's just so much so much sureness of in yeah. each line and that's how yeah. you know it's a frazetta or not a real frazetta i would say sure. look at the lines you can you can tell he's very precise um we and here's so here's a battlestar galactica yeah scale. you guys see that okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i so uh no so i good. i don't know the whole history of battlestar galactica was it a thing before it was the tv show because like um I don't think so. Yeah, he... these were these were for the ads, so that's as oh, far as okay. it got. And um, he didn't he really didn't want to do Battlestar Galactica just because he he was like already so far in his career at that yeah, point exactly. that he didn't mm. need to he didn't need to do anything that he wouldn't retain the rights to. Right. So ABC, the producer came and he was like, "I'm going to pay you a ridiculous amount of money and you're going to do this." <laughs> and, and then he was still able to work a deal where he was able to sell reproductions and you know, right. use it as, as he wishes, but yeah. that, then that, you know, that's the reason why he didn't do uh, any projects for George Lucas for star Wars, because he wouldn't ah. be able to retain those rights. So he was like, George, I love you, but no, so we're not, wow, it's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so Smart. Here's a little, look at this. So we have a little pile of original art down oh, here. Oh, nice. Because, <laughs> this, oh is, this is, this is like a, you know, a, a typical Frazetta thing you'd see. If any of you have ever been to the house, you would um, know that, Ellie and Frank like to keep stacks of art just like piled on the ground very casually. Um, I, I and I, there's been pictures on the internet with him with like his at the earth's core in the sure. grass. And yeah. so it's a very like, you know, carefree 
Like yeah, yeah. Really I good. like how comfortable everything is. You can kind of just yeah. sit down, look through an art book, flip through some art. Yeah. yeah, we want it to feel like when you come here, like you're you're part of the family. You know, we'll get yeah. you we'll fix you a cup of coffee, get you some food, and just right. hang out and just be in in immersed yeah. into the art into. The how, many, world. how many grown men have you seen cry when they come to the museum? <laughs> Seriously. So, so the opening was what, and I, you know, we can we can kind of talk about the video and then keep touring. Um, yeah. The opening the other night was really really emotional, sure. and and there were a lot of tears, and you know, just like I said again, the importance of of being able to show the artwork and and seeing the like the fans' reactions. That's what it's all about, and. There were there were a lot of waterworks going the other yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, so, it's really powerful when you see stuff like that in person because it's like it's existed in your life, but you've never met it. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I mean, it's just everyone set kept the saying the same thing. They're just like it's. I mean, he was he's everything to me. He's he's inspired like my whole life, not just like my career, but my whole yeah. life, like the mm. images, and it's it's really beautiful and. Again, like th there's a, an amazing, it's amazing to have an online community, but to to see people in person and be shoulder sure. to shoulder looking at these masterpieces together and, and just being able to look at the details and like learn from what other people see in the artwork is, mm -hmm. there's, it's just not, you can't match that experience. So have, yeah. actually, have you had any like uh, notable guests, like a, has a Kaluta come through to pay homage is a, really? you know. We had um uh, Sean Murray. I believe that's what I'm so when you guys could put yeah, the no names. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a really we had a really great Ringling professor come the other night. He I, uh, maybe I'll put an, I'll put his name in the comments. I'm sorry, yeah. Sean. At least he got his first name, but he came through, and I mean, just uh, uh, Pete and I can't I can't even pronounce his last name, but just uh, that's terrible. I know, but, his, <laughs> no. but 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 a lot of I mean all. Ever, we think everyone's special, so it's, yeah, it's yeah, hard to yeah. say, uh -oh. you know. Well, everyone, like everyone, an autograph wall, you know. Everyone, like, uh, everyone, <laughs> I mean, if you're a fan, if you're a fan of any kind of fantasy or sci-fi, like you're a Frazetta fan, I meet people that like they kind of they know that I draw comic books, but they don't collect yeah. comics. Like adult adult friends that I have, and they all mm -hmm. know Frazetta stuff. Like they'll ask me, oh. they'll go, "Do you know that guy?" Like, and I'll go, "Oh, Frazetta, I know who you're." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So. All right, you guys were asking me about the, the opening. I wanted to tell you a story, like uh, you bring up, bring up crying. So we uh -huh. had um, John Goodwin and Emily from Writers of the Galaxy uh, uh, join us on Friday for the opening, and they came because it was the 40th anniversary for the Battlefield Earth, at which my grandpa illustrated for L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah. So they have like so much respect for my grandfather and the legacy. And, you know, he, he did these, like, th these are the re actually only reproductions in the museum. This is dream okay. flight. You can right, tell right. the reproductions from, we only have a few reproductions. Everything else is original, Yeah. but um, these like he did for oh. L Ron Hubbard space encounter and then dream flight. And then hold up this. So here's God, battle. Those are reproductions. Earth. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah those are, those are from great. Presetta girls. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, nice. So they, they came and they brought these beautiful uh, limited edition uh, oh, yeah, that's a great that they one. had. Yeah. Remember they had the they had Frank sign them, which I mean they're just right beautiful. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, so so they brought those with them, and they also brought us this video that no one has ever seen before. Um. They had just found this interview of my grandfather, which was conducted back in 1988 when he came out to LA for the writers of the future. Um, it was some sort of gala and he was a uh -huh. judge on the panel. Mm. So he was, I, I had seen this video a few weeks ago. They wanted to preview it with me and see what I thought and if it would be appropriate for the opening. I saw it and I actually, I just got really overwhelmed and yeah. um, really emotional. And, and uh, I said, of course, like we need to, we need to have this play at the, at the opening. So they came out, they played it for everyone. Everyone was sobbing and you yeah. know, it, it felt like my grandpa was here in the room, yeah. could, you know, like it was, it was so cool. So the reason like, I, I and we're, they're going to premiere this video. Like, I can't just leave you guys hanging. They're going to premiere this video in April at their event. And then okay. I believe after that, they're going to figure out like how we can use it together. Um, I'm kind of, you know, hoping for maybe like another documentary or something, maybe it could yeah. be fitted for that. Um, but 
it, it it's a five minute video of my grandpa talking about just his art and just in giving advice to other artists of, of wow. what to do. And he was, like I said, it was 1988. He must have been, mom, how old was he in that video? In his late, early 50s? 60. He must have if been was, in his- 88, he would have been 60. Was he 60? No. Yeah, because he had, no, he had a stroke at 58. Hmm. Okay, no, your thyroid. So, no, so 88, he was born in 28, he was 50. Yeah, 50. right? Is that the right math? Thank you. Not 60. No, I don't know. <laughs> 28, 28, it was 88, he'd be 60. Okay, so he was 60. All right. So, what? 60 is still young, trust me. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> he was just anyway. a kid. <laughs> yeah, he was just a kid. So, when he was in that video, I mean, this is my, my, I was born in 1988. My grandpa had his major oh. stroke in 1996. So I did mm. get to spend time with him when he was like just sharp and charismatic. And yeah. those are my earliest memories, which we talked about last time. Like my grandpa, you know, showing me his, his most prized things that inspired him, like, you know, Disney's Fantasia, the Frank Sinatra, the music, like the movies and going out on the property and just exploring. And, you know, he was just so much fun and so like, you know, just masculine and cool. Mm. And then when he had that stroke, it was kind of like that, that well, it wasn't kind of like, it was like, it, it happened. He lost that part of himself. And he mm. then became the grandpa that I speak of a lot, where he's like that just cute, funny, like you can't believe the things that are coming out of his mouth. Mm. Um, but that part of him where he had that charisma and that confidence, yeah. I didn't, I didn't really remember that until I saw the video. Sure. And and the, my first thoughts, honestly, were just, I was a little pissed off. Like, why? Why did he have to get mm. sick like that? Why did we have to lose him? And I mean, it was, it was, it was like night and day. It wasn't the same person anymore. Right. So in the video, like uh, going back to that, I mean, he just talks about, you know, it all goes back with his paintings to design. So everything is about design. Everything is about shapes. I've, I've read about this in interviews. I've posted about his interviews when he talks about like holding the painting upside down and seeing if the shapes all work together. Yeah. But to, to hear it coming from his mouth and, you know, using the hands and, and seeing him move his hands and just yeah. like, you know, pull these words and, and talk, he talks about past lives and, you know, he doesn't know where it comes from. And it's right. just, it, it, it like, it just sucks you in for the five minutes. And you, again, you oh feel God. like you're spending time with the Frank that made these paintings. Yeah. And that is, again, it's so different than my experience of like what, how I remember him as a, you know, a, a, an early, an adolescent, a teenage, an adult. I just right. didn't get to have that time. So there were a lot of people here that, that did know my grandfather at that time. And it, I think it brought back those memories again of like, there, there he is there, yeah. there was, that was Frank Frazetta. And, you know, even, even if you look at a picture from like 1996, like we have some photographs of him here when he was at the air show in Punta Gorda and he it was 1996. And after the stroke, I mean, you can look from, you can look at a picture from 96 and then like 2001. And then just those few years, he aged so rapidly. Yeah because of his illness and like he lost his ability to to talk to walk to use his right hand he yeah. like he gained he gained a lot of weight he didn't look like Frazetta anymore and it just yeah. kind of made that whole picture come together with like wow now i understand why he was so like embarrassed and didn't want to talk to people because of what he was compared to right. what happened to him after the strokes like i i wouldn't want to come out either i would yeah. be totally devastated that that happened I saw him at Comic Con, um, nineteen ninety six ish, uh, like like right right around right then. before, yeah. No, it might have been ninety four or ninety five. Um, I think it, it was, was ninety five. He was in San Diego. Yeah, so it was right before it, you saw him at the time that. Yeah. So, quick question, because I've always wondered this: in the Frazetta painting with fire documentary, there's a scene with Frank talking on a stage, and he's wearing like a blue kind of flannel shirt, and he's talking about his art, and it looks like it's probably the late 70s early 80s is there yeah. more of that footage like do, like where did that come from because he's he's I, clearly he's speaking at like a college or something that and we had um steve ringenberg he did the uh, great frazetta interview in uh david anthony's comic journal right and he he was he was here he attended the opening and he actually mentioned that one that that other interview and said he thinks that's the only other interview that someone recorded of frank so we're we're trying to hunt it down and because you, you figure he must have spoke for at least 
10 or 20 minutes. I mean, that would be sure. cool. Yeah. Oh, he was you a talker. Put... He probably talked longer. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm going to hunt that down. I am. I it hope has you, to be I, somewhere. It has to be. It has yeah. to be. It's, yeah. it's, it's such a great little clip, but it's like, it leaves you so wanting more. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. This one left me wanting more too. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I just need to, to, to hear more of his, his advice and just, you know, again, and he's always, he's always said this, but in different ways, but it's always the same message. He always says, be yourself. And he right. goes, I don't care if it's, if it can be less than perfect. Yeah. Um, I don't, don't try to, don't try to impress me by being like a perfectionist. He's like, just be yourself. And if I yeah. get, and, and if I, if I can pick up on authenticity, you're going to give me an emotional response and I'm going to love you. And that, isn't that the truth with anything, with art, yeah. with, with anything in life, just being yourself. Yeah, it's I I work with a lot of like aspiring and not not necessarily young chronologically, but you know people that that want to get really good at their art, and and I I tell them because the, it's a common question, and it's always the first question that artists get: Who is your influences? Who who yeah. inspires you? And the thing is, is a lot of it really does have to come from you. I mean, it's an incredibly important thing for you to be in touch with your own identity. The influences yeah. are going to come out naturally. The answer right. is Frank Frazetta. The answer is yeah. Frank Frazetta. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I was thinking, I'm like, easy for you to say, Grandpa. You're a genius. Like, <laughs> yeah. hey. And, and I mean, everyone, I'm, and I, I think everyone has something in them. It's just, you know, maybe maybe it's not going to be to the level of Frank Frazetta's excellence, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to so, keep, keep touring you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We so can look at this so, is the prelim oh, wall. So oh look my how, God, look nice. at look how tiny these are. Here's my hand again. Here's you're gonna yeah. see my hand. Look at that. Yeah, I know. That's such a great piece too. That's a funny one with the uh, the naked girl on the horse with him. It's so detailed. And we have we have that original too. I'm gonna go. Over oh to that. yeah, nice. Oh, so that's a great. The, oh wow. <laughs> Red planet. We have the Queen Kong. Oh yeah, I remember when those were going up on Heritage. Not those exact pieces, <laughs> but I remember when when the prelims were being sold on Heritage, maybe 15, 18 years ago. And I was like, oh my man. Oh yeah, that I, it, I think it was two thousand two. My grandma was selling a ton of them. At, yeah. I think they must have been trying to buy something. I don't know. When yeah, you see like yeah, a yeah. lot of Frazettas going up, my grandma was she had her eye on some sort of real sure, estate. Sure, sure. Oh, so there it is. Here it is. Oh wow. <laughs> the, horse, the horse is so awesome as her feet are great too like the whole thing man it's just so killer isn't it great the horse yeah. i mean the, we were talking about it yesterday and just the way he created the atmosphere in the back like you know those, the misty soldiers yeah. Yeah. Eyes. i don't even know yeah. if i ever really noticed those guys coming out of the the mist. oh yeah no <laughs> It's it's inc it's incredible, and like you said, it's still you can still see the shine on on the paint, yeah. which is just remarkable. Um, so here we have his Castle of Sin. This was in oh, Play yeah. the Playboy. <laughs> wow! Oh, I haven't seen this one. Wow! I haven't seen this one? Oh, look no. At this. Look at this little detail. This little I, I don't know, I, cut, look, I guess an Easter egg. You see that back there? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Death dealer. Death dealer. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. I don't I don't know if I picked up on that either. I've seen this piece many times though, but yeah, that's really cool. Well, and that's like the, the, the with when I when I keep it, I getting more and more passionate about his art like yeah. every day, honestly. Yeah. And when that's that's what he did so well. He he had a focal point, such a strong focal point of all of his art that yeah. you have to spend time and and move your eyes yeah. around and mm -hmm. spend time looking at it because even like now maybe not to this day but a couple a couple years in I would still be like wow I've never noticed that part of the painting before it's yeah. incredible yeah oh yeah this, oh, this I love this one yeah <laughs> this is becoming more and more of like my like all time most like just my most loved piece because yeah. this one this one has a lot of ties to what I talked about with his him loving Fantasia. So do you yeah. remember at the end? Do you remember the, the uh, night of Bald Mountain scene with the little um, the hand and the little yeah. purple like devils coming up? This is this is what inspired. That's that is what really? inspired this painting. Man, yep, the colors on their flesh are amazing. All of it's, it's so good. I know when you see like the blues and the purple. Yeah. I mean, it's the yeah. pinks and the knee. It's is that like, that's watercolor, isn't it? Is that watercolor? no? This is this is oil. That's oil. God, it's yep. so yeah. It's so yeah. thin. So wow. thin. That's what everyone was saying. They're like, "How is it so flat?" I'm like, "I guess he really, he really He's thinned out the oil." Yeah. <laughs> so you know this piece? 
Neanderthals. Yeah, this yeah. is a great story. Tell them, tell them the story about the, the Mason. All right. <laughs> so Neanderthals, this was a cover to Creepy. Um, he had to send it out to Jim Warren on a Monday. It was a uh, Sunday evening and my grandpa was a notorious procrastinator. So my <laughs> grandma was, my grandma was yelling at him and she's like, Frank, we got to pay the bills. What are you doing? So <laughs> he, he realized because he was um, also very frugal, let's call it frugal with his art supplies. Um, he realized he didn't have any canvas boards. So he started like kind of panicking and he went into the basement and he ripped a piece of masonite from the floor. He ran upstairs. <laughs> he did. He, he knocked this out in six hours. Po six going hours. Up, going close on it so they can see the texture of the board and like how. So that's that's so how, cool. <laughs> can you see the masonite going through yeah, him? Like yeah. through their bodies. It's in, it's so cool. It looks so awesome. It's just, it's just genius. Like that's all. Like I can like, one word, genius. I wonder I mean, if that's it, what popularized painting on masonite is him doing this. Possibly. <laughs> it might have been. I have no idea. The the um, way that, the way that you can see through their bodies and see the masonite is sick. It's so yeah. cool. It's it's so sick. You know, someone told me, and I don't know if it's true, but do you see the little blob up there, the little like black area? Yeah. What is that? So I guess that was a face that he painted out as he had more like stacked oh, behind. I can, see I can see it. Oh yeah. And 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 the, the gentleman was questioning it. He's like, I don't why didn't he go back and fix that? And I said, Well, it's probably because it wasn't a girl, so he didn't care. <laughs> if, it, if it was the girls, he always went back and changed to like a you know, right. like thing and he changed it to Moon's Rapture. So that's that's probably why. Oh, um, yeah. here's his dark kingdom. So I don't know if you guys have heard the news, but this is uh Carl Edward Wagner's novels, Dark, uh, Dark Crusade with Kane, they're actually adapting this to a series. So they called us and they were like, you know, we want to, we really want Kane to look like, sorry, the glare is so bad. Yeah, no uh, worries, they're no like, worries. They're like, that's we really angle. just, yeah, come in, yeah, that's that good, good right, there. right there. Oh God, look at that. All right, yeah, you can see, like, again, and this one, this this vibrancy, it can't really be replicated, like, go, the prints or anything. Go super close to his face. His, this guy's face is so freaking intense. Oh, my God, look at that. That was the glare. Wow. No, it's good. He's, that guy is it's ready so, to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I apologize. I'm not able to flip my camera, so I'm holding it without being able yeah, to no see worries, it. No so, worries. You know. Yeah, no worries, no worries. So you were saying that the people doing the series want to emulate this piece for the show is that right yeah they they said this this is like like robert e howard's conan yeah. they said this this is kane frazetta created he depicted kane you know yeah, carl edward wagner exciting. who wrote the story yeah so i'm i'm really excited for it um obviously it's very early hollywood reporter just wrote about it um but i talked to the producers and they're like it's happening we're making it happen so i yeah, i have i have faith in them excellent <laughs> so this is um actually uh yeah. my mom oh, cool. do you guys this, do you remember this in fire and ice yeah <laughs> yes yeah so my mom posed for this she said she was on a fire escape and my grandpa took a few oh. a few photos of her and i i love it i think this was done in watercolor and pencil it's really cool again the width so, of the legs the legs fading out is so like just looks so good well, he like didn't have time for feet and hands. You know? like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have time for it. I don't care. Sure. Oh my um, god! Here, oh. Beth Beeler, again, the angle on the legendary. Oh, oh man! Oh my god! <laughs> the red, he, oh, isn't so, it? Yeah, God, it's so amazing. vibrant in person, dude. That it's crazy that like like and I like I said, I know how meticulous you guys are with the prints. But look at the red on his face. I don't think I've ever seen it that vibrant before. Yeah, look at the fire in the background. No, we, like I said, we are like looking at the originals going, uh, yeah, we need to fix God up dang. our prints a little bit better. <laughs> because wow. you just, it's it's so incredible, the colors. Look at on his arms, too. All the it's texture. Like, God dang. I don't Sorry. think I've ever seen all that texture. <laughs> this is no. great. Wow. The phone is doing this pretty good justice, actually. <laughs> Oh, thank God for the iPhones, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Jesus. This this video is going to be studied by people, re you realize, for like the next like 10 or 20 I, years. I hope so. So this here, is another okay, great one. You got, some, you got some really choice pieces here. This is great. Yeah. So I told you guys I split up the artwork, and that was uh, really yeah. stressful. <laughs> um, because it's like, oh, who gets what? But my yeah. mom was very, very passionate about this piece. She said this was like, yeah. You know, she always loved the red cape and 
you can see that without the glare like conan's face is just so mm, savage in this one yeah with a red light coming over i mean it's just yeah. oh, what an yeah. atmosphere he created uh. I love Frank's art so much. The detail of his anatomy, just the hand of that ape creature is so oh intricate. And then he, like, you could just to see again, like the greens and yeah. the canvas, it's just so beautiful. Um, so let's go over here. I don't think we yeah. showed you. Um, what are those pinball pretty... machines? Are those related to Frank? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but. But we might we might have one related to Frank's. You should you this guys is, should totally do one. Oh, Metallica, nice. Yeah, this is the, the Metallica <laughs> pinball machine, and this is the out of commission Batman pinball machine. Wow, um, my, it, it broke, and my mom's very upset about it. She's a like big gamer. She loves pinballs, right. and we we're kind of like making fun of her. We're like, you're such a nerd, and she's like, oh, <laughs> you know, get out of here. You kids don't know how to have fun. But so now you, more and more and more, I appreciate her. I'm like, okay, I'm turning into you. I'm turning into a nerd too. <laughs> I, I, I would imagine that Kirk Hammett might stop by the studio at some point and or the the museum and check it out because he's he's got a few yeah. presettas. Yeah, he still has um, Dracula meets Wolfman. I believe yeah. he has a um, couple. He's oh, I know he sold a few. I was under the impression that he had picked up a Conan maybe like five years ago. I, maybe I'm wrong on yeah, that. Yeah, no, Berserker. He has Coney and the Conqueror. You're right. Yeah. He, he still has that one. And then he has Autumn People. Um, and then a creepy that I can never remember the darn yeah. cover, the name of it, but it's the it's with the zombie walking through the doorway and the, oh, right, uh, right. Got, the guy at his desk. Yeah. So he owns that. And they're, I mean, you guys have probably seen the pictures, but they're like eight by 10. Like they're oh. so small, the paintings. Really? It's oh, okay. Crazy. I thought you meant Crazy. eight feet by ten feet. I was like, I no, don't know Frank eight by ten inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> inches. Oh, yeah. wow. So this is. I have a, a really cool, and then I have to share with you guys. Yeah, right. of course. So this is the last painting my grandpa worked on. Okay. Um, oh. Now this was his National Lampoon cover, and I don't know if you remember, but it had the beautiful girl with the blonde long hair, and I mean, it was just such an iconic piece unfortunately and i see him looking at me in a picture over there sorry right. grandpa <laughs> but but he um he worked on it a ton of times revising Notorious this tinker. Yeah, yeah yeah and unfortunately this was like you can see it in the face a little bit again i'm trying to see okay so you can yeah. see it in his face that he definitely worked on that um and then if you could see this in person there's like so many layers of paint that she actually sure. is like three dimensional now. <laughs> um, wow. It's like popping off the canvas. Right, right. But that this is like a beautiful story because my grandpa and grandma, okay, they had they they had a beautiful relationship in the beginning, as many do. But over the years, you know, just with a lot of health issues, stress, like they they yeah. they fell kind of into a bad place. Um, my, but my grandpa, like even after he lost her, he, you know, he'd talk about, oh, she changed when she was 50 years old. What happened? Like we started, we didn't love each other anymore, but right. man, did he miss her? He was, he cried at the funeral. I mean, he's, and so when he came down here to Boca for the last nine months, I mean, I spent a lot of time with him. So did my, my partner, Joe, who runs for Zeta girls with me. And my grandpa would just talk about Ellie like every day, like good and bad. Yeah. And he worked on this every day. He painted this every single day. And and I mean, it looks like my grandma, like before <laughs> yeah. she passed, you know, with the hair. And he didn't get to the blonde yet, but he was creating Ellie on this canvas. And I just think that as much as there was so much like tension and sure. hurt over the years, there was still so much love. And I can yeah. and obviously, you know, men have a hard time showing their feelings sometimes. So I think he, this was doing his it way of painting. Yeah. Yeah. He was doing it through his painting. But I mean, this still has like, this is still like exactly the same as when it was on the cover. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. It's the witch doctor. The snake, I just noticed is kind of interesting. Look at the yeah, right? that snake. <laughs> hmm. it's I wonder to get where you. it's going. <laughs> coming to get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's something I just noticed with you he was guys. A dirty bird. He was a dirty bird. <laughs> he was a dirty bird. <laughs> so I'm going to show you something else that's really cool. I might have a hard time because they're so small yeah no worries no worries but we have wait, wait, his the, oh go ahead. go ahead oh i was gonna say the piece behind you with the, um the the girl the fairy like the fairy girl and the plane mm -hmm. that's crashed the there was a fun the funny story about that he put their zip code on the the tailpiece of the plane but didn't realize that it was their zip code oh no 
Yeah, you know, like he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't realize that he didn't. I, was, I guess what Doc Dave said was that Frank didn't really know their zip code, like, and and he had put it there. And Dave goes, "You put your zip code," and he goes, "I did subconsciously, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah." He did. Well, that that's a telltale. He didn't have to like pay the bills or worry about right. anything. No, exactly. you, know? you don't know your own zip code. <laughs> Sure. Like, really? <laughs> I did, he, but, you know, being a master, he, did he really have to? You know, I don't know. Yeah. So my grandpa, when he came to Florida, um, after my grandma passed away, he did bring some oh. of his cameras. So we have a few of his, his oh, uh, Minolta. Cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is, let me see what else we got here. Um, a Nikon. His, his favorite cameras were Nikons. He loved them. He, but, he, I mean, there's a really cute scene with Angelo Torres in the documentary where he goes, mm -hmm. oh, he goes, I, he goes, I got three of those. <laughs> like <'cause> Angelo's, <laughs> his, Angelo's got like a fancy camera. Oh, he was always one upping people with his cameras. He's like, you haven't seen my collection. I mean, Do I you show some of his photographs too. I don't we family oh, stuff, you know, we, oh. don't know who, we don't know who has the good family photos. Oh. Um, Someone does when, and you know, that's something I've been working on for a while. I've, I've, I've accumulated a few by, you know, just being the squeaky wheel. Sure, and, I didn't realize he was such a photographer. That's really oh, great. Oh, loved photography. Oh, photography. I mean, it was really, you know, baseball, baseball would probably be number one sports. Yeah. Uh, photography was two and then art was three. Like that's how much he loved photography. He really like with cameras. Like I mean, I remember him at the end. My um, my my partner Joe, he would take him to the thrift shops and the new camera shops. And I remember when he got this. Like it was it was in 2010. He got this new Canon, and he couldn't believe the zoom features. He just <laughs> sat there. He was he was like, <laughs> being grandpa. He was yeah. up at the top floor. And he was zooming out the window into other people's like homes. And sure, he's like, sure. wow. He's like, this is crazy. I was like, listen, peeping Tom is not okay anymore. You can't do that. He can't just take pictures of random women either. Oh, in and my day. Like, no. Yeah, he's like, tell me what to do. Shut up. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Do what you want. Secret, um, the secret present a photo book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to see those photos. I mean, I know, I, I think my grandma actually destroyed quite a few photos uh, she had oh. she had you know she, they had a lot of dirty pictures sure. um did, did, they were uh, they were wild friend. kids <laughs> did he did he develop his own film oh yeah that was okay. i mean my grand he had so when I, when you went into my grandfather's house you'd go into the, the you'd go into the kitchen and then my grandma would always be in the kitchen you go down into the sunken living room and then you go through the sunken living room back into his like studio area before yeah. you get to the studio, he had this whole little area dedicated to his dark room. Wow. And he would just, he'd be in there for hours. I mean, my, I, I've told you before, but my grandpa, when the grandkids would come over, he'd just run out and be so excited to see us. But yeah. my grandma would complain about it. He'd been in that dark room all day developing film. You know, right. like that was that was his happy place. That was his, he was such a, a hobbyist around, yeah. like I said. But, but he That's just awesome. loved the technology of the cameras. And then, of course, the whole like the developing it the whole process it was like very like 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 i think like therapeutic to him right so i'm gonna get out this one and right. then you had a bunch of strips strips on the wall i would love to check out those too oh the, like, yes black and white spritz, uh, yes strips. Some so comics. look at, look at oh neat thing. all right so he did these little flip books when he was wow. i believe i think he was around like 12. i've which never is seen in, that oh my god no, it it's really <laughs> 12. Really incredible. It's brilliant. Can you guys see 12. that? If I'm yeah, yeah. This angle? Okay. So my hands are very dry right now, but I do no, realize I should it. be wearing white gloves. Oh which... my God. Look at that. God, that's Dude, awesome. are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. He was, he was, he was definitely, like I said, early, early teens. Oh my God. No older so than like 13 good. years old. Dude. <laughs> I've never seen this stuff ever. Just ever. tell me if you if I get out of focus or anything. No, no, no. Let me know. Uh, move a little bit to the right, like like um the opposite right there. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Wow, so wow. look at the look at the weight of the people like falling off of that. I mean, I don't like figures that good right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> That's so good. We made it. <laughs> He's doing a whole adventure okay. in his head. Look at that shot right there, That's Kelsey. Great. It's right out of like a movie. <laughs> It's it's really really incredible. I oh mean, my it God, just keeps man. getting better. How many of those did he make? I think he had a, a, quite a few. My mom has only two. I'm not wow. sure if there are any in the other museum. Um, 
but Wait, some of them to, some to of them a little were to the right a little to the right there you go yeah How's yeah that? Perfect. so he just drew all the time then this is oh my gosh like when yeah. he was when he was a kid that's all he did that was, was I can't believe, like, it just shows that, like, the, the, all the distractions really that people have now, that that is so cool, Sarah. Seriously. Isn't this just, this is fantastic. That's that incredible. Is awesome. And see how small it is, and then he has the yeah. paint on the ah. back. So I think a couple of these, I mean, there we have a few in the family, like I said, but um, I believe over the years, my I think it was my grandma, it must have been my grandma, someone separate, separated a bunch of them and then, like, just sold them off. And, oh, it's individual and, and it. It could have even been my grandpa trading them for cameras, to be honest. Sure. So seeing I, that book, I, I mean, seeing that book is, fa is so fascinating to me. It really makes me think. In his paintings, in his whole, his whole universe that he's created, it's this yeah. living, it's this living world in his head that he was like trying to get out since he was very young. This I mean, is already yes. surpassed my fantasies of how good this video was going to be. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this is insane, I'm so happy Sarah. to hear it. No, so thank you so Johnny, much. Oh, Mom, boy. this is his Johnny Comet, right? Okay. Oh, this is yeah, my these favorite. are his Johnny Comets. Can you see please those okay? Mom, please tell your mom hello and thank you also. Here. Well, let me just go up to her real quick. She's with guests, yeah, but yeah. she's going to say hello. Say hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Is. hi. This, is, this is the woman behind the, everything. The museum thank is, you. The museum is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> they said it's beautiful. They she can't she can't hear you. Yeah, that's that's skateboards. <laughs> oh yeah, those, that's from our, our primitive skate of uh, Frazetta Girls collection. <laughs> I love it. We're making more though. They'll be just exclusively Frazetta Girls for decorative. But yeah, yeah. these are these his Johnny Comets. I mean, oh, again, so cool. the ink and like the the girls that he did, like ah, oh, that's so good. Just, wow. His inking. Oh, I love his comics. <laughs> oh my god, that's his so arm. Cool. Oh my god. Yeah, look at that. I mean, he just, Arm is he, insane. <laughs> he was he was so freaking talented. I, I've said it before where I'm like, oh, well, he just practiced a lot. It's like, oh, no, he he got yeah. something. He got something given to him before he was born. He just came oh, yeah. out a genius. And then he worked at it. Obviously, you have to have both. You yeah. have to have a gift and a work ethic. Yeah, definitely. No, it's he's the combination of both. He really was yep. driven. Oh, yeah. He was oh, so wow. competitive. That's what I said to people, too. Like, you know. He what he was he like he sold his artwork to get things he wanted. He wasn't materialistic. He didn't need a whole lot, but yeah. he sure did like breaking those records. When he when he like sold the uh, <laughs> the destroyer yeah. for a million, he was still alive yeah. when he when they sold that. Yeah, and I just remember him going, "That's what I deserve," you know. Yeah, he, 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 he's doing he, a little peacocking he, walking around. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, this is because he was you know think about it. he was born in 1928 in the Great Depression. He had no money, mm. like he was, and that's that's very typical with everyone in that generation. Yeah. But I remember at the end he had like a, a huge. He'd always carry his cash around, so he had a huge um, wad of hundreds in his pocket, and he went right down to the grocery <laughs> store, and he looks at the he opens the freezer and he goes seven dollars for klondike bars he's like Pfft. he's like they're out of their mind and he went by the klondike like my grandpa you got a pocket full of cash come on i'm like i'm like you're 82 and you have you just sold a painting know, right? for a million dollars and you won't get the seven dollar klondike bar yeah. so he was just he was really frugal and yeah yeah it was about the principle he's like yes, sir. i'm not gonna oh, i'm yeah. never gonna get he was sicilian he was never gonna get ripped off you know yeah, yeah. Was, that was the thing i'm i'm kind of like that too i'm like I don't auto pay i don't trust these people yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. it's generational um yeah. So here's a watercolor. Oh, God, I love it. Great. Watercolor is my favorite. Is that, is that Bo Derek? Or is, is that from the Bo Derek era stuff? Mm, it's not Bo Derek, but it okay. you might be onto something that it was inspired by Bo Derek. Because mm. this was a, these were done, I believe, in the the early 80s or late 70s. Oh, yeah. And, you know, most so of good. the pillow books, these were done for my grandma as the gift, just like the, the Jesus and her self portrait. Yeah. So. So yeah, this is, this is fantastic. <laughs> Thir this is Thirty perfect. of those equals equals a painting for Ellie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then here's another really cute one. I I don't know if this was ever published. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like so I've seen fun. that. I love his cartooning. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah, it really. Well, that's where like he was an enigma. You know, he was like this. Like I said before, he was this this charismatic like masculine, like really cool athletic guy that you just like, after I saw like the video, like I said, I felt like I kind of wanted to like bow to him. 
you know yeah, you're like, he's an icon oh. yeah, yeah he's like a, he's a master like okay master let me bow yeah. to you <laughs> but then he had that sweet side that obviously carried with him until the end yeah. um but he definitely you know he he, he let that little sweet side out before he yeah. lost his his masculinity totally um this is a fun story so one more fun story for you guys sure. all right so Oh, wow. I didn't know this existed until a little bit ago. Okay, I was gonna say this, I don't think I've ever, I've never seen this. Yeah. All wow. right. So he did this in like you know five seconds, and he was just showing me like a teepee and a horse and an Indian, and then he wanted I guess us to do like a competition. So this was my grandma's uh, <laughs> oh. version, and then this was my That's aunt's good. version, and it's faded. And then there's hold on, let me go to the Wait. end. Uh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> there's my that's version great. <laughs> oh that's fun so wow so i guess he was giving me art lessons when i was sure. very small and i don't remember um oh, that's so, cool. so fun it didn't really <laughs> stick with me but you know well <laughs> so yeah that was that was fun and then we have i want to shout out one one other person another artist sure. greg greg staples oh, so this okay. is the only oh, yeah, that's great greg made yeah. this for my grandpa when uh before he passed away and it was sent here to to the building where my grandpa was residing and my mom of course held on to it and now we proudly have that in the museum because yeah. i just think it's like the best portrait that it was ever done of him oh it's fantastic honest. yeah yeah it really captured him it greg captured staples him in, yeah greg staples he's amazing yeah, Love he's him. Awesome. great guy yeah <laughs> so yeah i'm just looking around if i missed anything Oh my gosh, uh, yeah. Sarah! This is this was such a good birthday celebration. I think oh, Frank would be happy. <laughs> I I can like not to, you know get yeah, thank you and not to get like weird, but like I I do yeah. feel him here. Like I really do. Like it's yeah. um it's been such a my 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 like I said with my mom. Like she's like seeing how important it is, and sure. you know we we're even talking about maybe you know because this won't be open for very long this year. But we're right. talking about having this exhibit maybe travel like have a traveling exhibit to go like all throughout the united states oh, you know, one day great. maybe yeah just so because so many people like i mean especially now with traveling it's like a, a nightmare yeah. and and you know again it's people have work and families so we just want everyone to be able to see the original art and it's been such a long time since they've been out and breathing again and you know when we when we had them displayed with Robert Rodriguez in like Los Angeles and Chicago, yeah. Austin. I mean, just to see people's reactions, like you guys today, like it just made me so happy. You guys like seeing like things that you've never seen before and go, yeah. oh, oh, my God. you know, like yeah. there's, there's nothing better than that. So I could, I'm I could look happy. at that little, that little book that he did right oh my now. God. And, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that little book's just going to go missing. Like a mom, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I promised myself when this was done that I had to get to work and that I wouldn't watch it back. But like, it's going to be, it's going to take a lot of discipline on my part to like not watch it back and look at all the art again. Yeah. I just, I'm so sorry about not having the phone where I can. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm, it, I'm, I'm aging with the technology. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, hey, I had a quick question about, um, uh, like when you do the reproductions. So mm -hmm. does does each segment of the family have reproduction rights to the whole catalog of Frank's work or do you only have reproduction rights to like what you guys have in hand? So that's an interesting not, not question. Right. Maybe, so, rights, maybe rights isn't the right word, but. Yeah, it's, you know, an agreement it, of sorts, maybe not right. rights, but an agreement. So an right. agreement was made when the family decided they didn't want to work together. Um, and, you know, they just don't, they don't like each other. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And they were like, we're not working together. We're not doing this. And it's, you know, in fairness to them, it's, um, it would be very like challenging because yeah. you have yeah. to really have that same vision of every, you know, everyone to have on the same mm. page. Like, you know, if some wants to sell it, some don't want to sell it. So, that was part of when when the art was being split up it was like okay well let's also split up some of the 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 rights oh, okay. so like the museum mm -hmm. has like you know the cat girl and we're not we, we don't have that um and you know that was just for i guess i guess so everyone could do their own business oh, that's yeah, yeah. My, my mom's dog no, but, no, um, <laughs> but, but most of like I, I said before a lot of the artwork was sold in prior years. So right. there's a, a giant catalog of art that wasn't like divided in terms of right. rights or, you know, I, I see everything as like, well, it's, 
it's Frank Frazetta's art. You know, what, what do you mean? Like this yeah. is one person's and this is another person. It's right. But for getting along in the sake of all that, you have to just abide by certain things. So sure. yeah, we, everything that we are allowed to sell is on Frazetta girls. Um, sometimes new ones rotate in and out and that's, you know, just depending on the, the back end and the legal agreements and all of that fun stuff. Well, so, for the for the yeah. fans of Frank everywhere, I just thank you for for doing this, for bringing it out to the to to everyone, so that we can oh, have it yeah. forever. You know, it's great. Seriously, yeah. this, well, I'd love to have you guys come out if you ever get oh. a chance. Like Kelsey's oh. close. Come tonight. on, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> get on that plane. Who cares? Yeah. Travel. <laughs> He's he's gonna swim through the swamps. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. Louisiana. Yeah, just go. Where go where were you again, Kelsey? Louisiana. I'm Baton Rouge. Yeah. Baton Rouge. Wow. Not I, too far. You know, I have I've had an obsession with Louisiana ever since I started like becoming obsessed with True Blood. You know the HBO Oh yeah, series. right. You know, I'm just like that. That old. It's like, just you know, like the, that. It's just like with the crickets and everything. The swamp and the vampires and the, and the, and the vampires. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, if there's vampires, they live there for sure. <laughs> now, can you hang out for like five or ten minutes and maybe take some questions from the people that yeah. are watching the live chat? So, yeah, so, I'm going to um, go outside if you guys don't yeah, mind. Yeah, no worries, no worries. And uh, many, many compliments thanking you. Honestly, I know you can't see oh. the chat, but but everybody is thanking you. They're saying that you're beautiful, that the oh, family is beautiful, <laughs> the art. Um, so the the first question that I'm seeing, and if you guys have questions, please post them in the comment section. And Kelsey, keep an eye on them too, in case okay. I miss one. So someone asked, who owns the fire and ice painting? Or is that Robert Rodriguez? Okay, oh, yeah, nice. uh, yeah, Robert Rodriguez, and he, I believe, he bought that one from my grandparents. Um, he also bought dust from uh, dust till dawn from them as well. Robert has. I was just talking about this last night. I believe Robert has like. 12 oils now okay um maybe 14 oh my and gosh. and he is still doing his due diligence with showing them which i love um right. he doesn't have it open to the public right now and i think you know a lot of that was like covid ever shut down everything sure. um but he is working on i know he's like working on like the mandalorian he was working on the mandalorian some like boba fret and um working with john favreau so he has like a lot of production of his own going on and he mm -hmm. told us that he's um he'll bring like the producers in the you know the cast and the crew and he's showing everyone his Frazetta originals like that he has his working with at the time. So he's like bringing in pretty big groups and you know I imagine once he has a lull if he has a lull he'll he'll reopen again and have his collection exhibited because he he's he's the one that you know in, encouraged my mom and my aunt and my uncle Billy to get their collection out there and travel with it and he just it's such an i mean as a creator as a director he just knows how important that is for to inspire people so another one of the questions was and I, I didn't really fully understand it was are you planning to come to europe soon and i i don't know like do you guys ever travel with this stuff um well the the, the rodriguez exhibits were the first time like i said it was ever really traveling right. exhibited you it but comic con right he brought it to Comic Con. He brought it to Wizard World in Chicago, and then he had it displayed, I believe, three years in a row um, at South by Southwest. And his he had a downtown studio in Austin, Texas, a, more like a museum. Actually, it was like a like yeah. a little a museum, like a creative house. Um, so he had that. He had a, like a I think he had about 40, 40 originals at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really great, but. But yeah, that's something we would love to do. We're we're in talks with some people right now. Just um, we'd probably start in the United States, see how that goes, right. and then hopefully, hopefully, you know, one day. I, I like I told you before, I'm buying some back and trying to. We're trying to make the collection grow, and that's that's a huge goal of ours. So we will we will try our best. Right now, um, P. Wayne Smith asks um, the hours and days um, that the museum is open, and then uh, parking. <laughs> so, so the uh, museum is appointment only. Um, we have most days booked right now in February. I'm, I'm to only taking reservations for February right now. Um, next week, we'll probably start with March. Um, but yeah, just uh, email us museum at frazettagirls.com and we'll get you we'll get you set up and okay. um, parking street parking wherever you can find weekends <laughs> no. are a little crazy. <laughs> Is Sunday, it, Sunday's is dead it, here. Is it metered two-hour parking, like uh, our yeah. Ritzy area? Okay, that's nice. 
Well, the only there's a caveat when when you kind of cross over Boca Grande, you have to pay a six dollar toll. Okay. No oh, admission wow. fee at the That's museum, but to get into expensive. yeah, uh, say a couple. Uh, I don't, well, yeah, what's it to get into New York City? I mean. It's, uh, kind of we have a we have a bridge here in San Diego that's that's pretty expensive to go over to get into Coronado. Oh right, it's, right. It's, what is that? It's, it's pricey. I can't remember how much it was, but I remember when I had to pay it one time. I was like, "Ouch!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like going over every day, going, "I should probably get a bridge." Toll I was just that. wondering that if you. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> the next question was how much of the work he did when he was young is still in your hands. It's cool to see stuff like that. The development of a legend. So I showed most of it in the video okay. of what my mom has. And I, I didn't bring all of my pieces I'm going to, but I actually, I posted it a bit ago on Facebook. I got a um, little panel, two little panels that were the size of like that cave girl book. Uh -huh. And it was his early work. And they were like, they were these little drawings of, um, of like of, of him playing baseball and his friends and they're like these like straight like just a, yeah. like stories baseball stories so i collected those back and and usually the, the beautiful thing about his early work is it's not priced entirely at, like out of control like his oils right. <laughs> so <Right. laughs> so those are those that's like the things the special things that we're trying to get back now because unfortunately a lot of his early works like i said they, they those were the ones that were traded for cameras or you know, sure. put at auction first because it wasn't going to have yeah. the, the same value as like Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. Now, um, you have a marriage proposal. <laughs> Man, who you marry? Or, or at <laughs> least adopt. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting um, choice. <laughs> Two choices. Hmm. Uh, um, so no let's see. and no. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I love you anyway. <laughs> Al Dente says, Sarah, what would you say is your favorite genre for fiction or art? Hmm. I, I, you know, my taste is everywhere, to be honest. Like I can, from personally, I mean, obviously my grandpa, like my favorite of his is like his fantasy stuff. Like I love, I love yeah. his fantasy artwork. Um, but I also love his comic artwork. I, I love comics. I love, I love contemporary. I'm all over the place. I mean, you when it's cool. good, it, when it's good, it's good. You know, yeah. you're, you're a Frazetta. You like it all just like grandpa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it that's, all. I that's mean, how I am too. Why put why put limits on it? Is my opinion. Okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll, this is um, like music. Are, are, if it's good, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you any any plans to do San Diego Comic Con this year? That depends on San Diego if it's back to like a somewhat normal. I know that I heard this year was like weird, really weird with Comic Con. Yeah. You you know, so I'm when it, when it gets, booked. are you booked for it? Yeah, but if 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 COVID's funky, I'm I probably would bail out. You know. We'll yeah. Mm. The, we we want to get we we've, we've had a couple of um invites to comic cons this year. We are a little hesitant to go back um in the same fashion that we were we were right. presenting it before. Um, and I might have mentioned this or like a, a, on our previous uh, episode together. But what I would really like to do and envision it right now is having like a, a retrospective, like a like almost like a booth like Alex Ross has, Bill mm -hmm. Sinkevich has where it's dedicated more so to, of course, there, there most likely won't be originals. I might be able to take mm. like one or two. Yeah. Um, probably my personal ones. It would be, I, yeah, that would be scary. Like even yeah. with security, like, man, I, I mean, I was amazed that Robert Rodriguez bought all those pieces. Cause I mean, dude, I would, I would want like my own hired security and like multiple, you know, five guys watching mm -hmm. each other. One guy yeah. Watch the other guy. <laughs> yeah. Robert's just like, kind of like my grandpa is. He's like very casual about it. Like, right. eh, it's fine. It'll be fine. Right. It's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how we, my mom is too. Like we've talked about it. We're like, Oh, is this, and, and that's always the problem with taking it out and you know yeah. it, it, the what ifs what could happen to the yeah. art like you know god forbid we drop one god forbid it lights on fire like there's sure. a lot of what ifs and insurance really isn't enough to feel okay about it because it's like well you still won't have the art if something exactly. happens to it yeah. you know and so so i would like to, to getting back to that i would like to have like a, a sort of like presentation where i can take everyone through give you more of like a detailed history about each piece of art and you know what cover was it on when was it yeah. done what time frame as much as i know and then of course like merchandise would be like an afterthought but we don't want to come to the comic cons and it's just like present a merchandise there we want it to be an experience so i don't know when that will happen but sure. we probably have it at san diego comic-con when that does happen 
Yeah. yeah. So Orlando Herrera asks, Sarah, do you have a super favorite of your grandpa's work? My super favorites like change all of the time. Like yeah. I, I just said earlier, Reassembled yeah. Man is becoming a super favorite. But I always forget this. And I'm glad you brought that question up again because I I've, I've been thinking about that. And I'm like, it's Golden Girl. Golden Girl is like if I had to pick one painting of his, it would be Golden Girl. Like if you know, if I'm is that the watercolor death, or is that that's Yep. Yeah, I love that yep. one. Yeah. It's it's just because you know what it is like everyone why do why are they our favorites? You know, it's, it's relatability. And right. Golden Girl like I'm 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 just a, a nature hippie, you know. I love mm. animals. I like whisper to dragonflies yeah. or so I think I whisper. Remember to them. I sent you but the picture <laughs> of the cat, the black panther with the the baby cub. <laughs> oh, like and like I mean I I I'm like delusional, you know. I think like these like panthers would be sweet to me and it's like no, right. like, rip your head off. <laughs> I I follow so many cats on on um Instagram. Uh this this black panther I follow. <laughs> Is it the panther that's in Luna, Russia with Luna, the pretty girl? Luna Pantera. Uh, yes. Yeah. The, pretty Russian, the pretty Russian girl. And she yeah, has this yeah, beautiful. I <laughs> yeah. I, Rich just likes it's called Pantera. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I I am I love her page so much. I go on it every day and I just think she has that beautiful Rottweiler and the Panther. Yeah. And I'm like, do I need to go to Russia to make this happen? Like, do I, like <laughs> how am I gonna get a pet panther? That's what I need. Bruce, Bruce is great. He's like having a wild animal in my house, but it's not it's not enough it's not quite yeah. a your your dog is beautiful too actually he's really cool looking i'm getting another one um, are you oh, a, cool. yeah a chocolate german shepherd with green eyes and i think i think it depends we have to meet him first but i think his name is going to be kane like the painting oh, sure nice. and but that could make him evil too you know that could be a that could be a bad nah. <laughs> manifestation for kane <laughs> german shepherd was my dream dog as a kid i wanted one so bad and then my mom got an old english sheep dog and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> those are so cute too the <laughs> they are cute, but it's not a german shepherd it's like two total like it is dog group... versus... yeah the goofy dog is sweet though bruce is like so <laughs> intense i'm like dude chill out like just cuddle with me you don't have to be guarding me non-stop but, right. uh, <laughs> he's a german shepherd like you said so what do i expect i need a sheep dog <laughs> it's my job yeah. I mean, so yeah. Mom asks if there's going to be a part two this is technically part two right now but Sarah, yeah. would, you, would you be willing to come on at a future date and talk to us again of course, because I have more exciting news coming after. Like I, I, I teased it before, but yeah. on Grandpa's birthday, we have a big announcement coming. Oh, okay, um, and I would love to come and talk with you about that once we oh, announce yeah, it. So yeah. you just reach out to me, and we can we can go into now that. You're talking for about a like while. like uh, like three days from now, you guys are doing an announcement. Okay. Yes. If you want to come back, on, if you want to come back on next week, just for like a short, like we could do thirty minutes, like so. The oh, to, that would be great. Yeah, yeah I'll be, yeah. I'll be here at the museum too, and we can, you know, do a okay. little a so mini tour this time, not a full tour. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And and we'll 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 do a few more questions. Are you you cool to hang out for maybe five or ten? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I have um a, more guests coming at two thirty, so like right, we're cut okay, off at two thirty. Yeah, that'd I'll, be great. Okay, so do you want to go eleven more minutes, and I'll give you ten minutes yeah. to sort of take a yeah. bathroom break and grab a coffee or whatever. <laughs> Vodka, yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> whiskey. Uh, I'm not that much of, fun. Yeah. Um, so lots of people saying thank you. Lots and lots of people saying thank you. So um, Bizarre asks, "Have you ever read heavy metal comics?" I read the um, one that came out, "Sun Eaters" by Dylan Sprouse. I was I was intrigued by that, um, and but I haven't read like the the OG heavy metal comics, and I I need to like Tarna, like I need to <laughs> under I need to get into that world. Sure, um, you know uh, so much of my world. Well, so much of my world, and this is embarrassing, don't judge me, but so much of my world has been like rom-coms and, you know, just right. real, real basic sure. girl stuff. Yeah, mine too. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're, basic, you're a basic girl too, Kelsey? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love like, my, like my thing is like just comedy in general. I love comedy. Um, but I have been like just kind of diving deeper into this world now. And I, I see, I see what all the hype's about. I love it. Yeah. So go escapism. It's great. So I'm gonna to toss you a hand grenade right now, okay? Where does I'm Sarah see the it. future? <laughs> we're tough. We we have thick skin. We're we're like yeah. we're, we're New Yorkers. Although I'm a transplant, I grew up in San Diego. <laughs> I was I was born in California, but I'm Texan. I'm, I have New York in my blood. Um. So anyway, um, yeah. where does Sarah see the future of art going? Does she believe in digital art and the dirty word NFTs? <laughs> NFTs. Oh my God. 
little story with NFTs. So I didn't, I, we had, okay, with NFTs, we are, we are in that space, but sure. I want to, a screaming child. I don't know if you hear that, but no this um, he hates the, NFTs. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they said NFTs. They're already coming. <laughs> yeah. So, so we were approached actually by a company called Everscape's Artify in early twenty, or sorry, late twenty nineteen, early twenty twenty. And mm. when they approached us, we were like, "What? What are you saying? We don't know what you're talking about." But we we were interested in the whole technology of it because. We had already been like very basically animating his work right. and it, we were mm. like okay this is this is a cool thing to be able to like animate his artwork and like sure i, I didn't understand about like the ownership or anything but right. what i did understand was that you could have a virtual museum you know you could go in and go on the computer and yeah. go into the details of his artwork and experience right. it from you know if you're in australia or china sure. wherever you are you have this opportunity to to see it that way so when they approached us i was like this is interesting like i i like this so you know months went, went by it, it takes a long time that they're, they're developing they're a new platform um and then we announced it in may of may of 2021 i think i posted it on twitter oh right. it was like one of the worst days of my life <laughs> oh no, um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> i i cried for hours and oh, i, no. I, I, I messaged i messaged some people and i was like i didn't think it was a bad uh, thing i was like wait uh, well, you know what well, this is for an experience and i tried to explain myself which you never want to do is explain right. yourself never apologize that. never apologize <laughs> and then i learned again and i'm like oh no and then it would just became like personal insults and i'm like all right so these people or they're trolling yeah. you know this is not yeah. this, is, this is not cool um and and then of course like as months went by everyone started getting into it and it became this like this thing yeah. but oh, what it's i see off. Yeah. it's it's taking off but the the what i want to say about nfts is like you know we might have had a peak of like okay you can buy something and you own like this like, you know this, this right. animated piece of art but what you need to do with NFTs is like create community and it needs to be yeah. like, like an incentive. Like, why am I buying this? You want people who are investing in this to have right. it go up. Like, that's the point you want to, you want to make yeah. it like, like, I don't, I it's essentially I don't... like the original art community. I mean, there's a it's, whole exactly. group behind the whole thing. I, I, exactly. I, I, have, I have people come at me cause I, for the, I was an inker uh, in comic books, which is like your kind of the second part of the process. Right. And pe people would always shit on blue lines. Blue lines is basically, um, say I work with someone in South America, they would send me a digital scan of the pencils. I print it out in blue and then I ink over it. And mm -hmm. art collectors are like, ah, blue lines are shit. I'm not going to collect them and da, 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 da. And it's like, well, it is technically original art. It's the printed line yeah. art. So there's all these distinctions that they make. But the reality is one thing that people don't understand is it's incredibly expensive to hold on to Frank's art. And to, to do what you guys do, there's a huge cost to it, to protect it, to show yeah. it and to get it out there. And you need ways to make revenue to be able to afford people to see the art. It, thank you for saying that. And it's so true. It's like, you know, everything, anything that my, like my partner, Joe and I, my mom, we've talked about this. We're like, everything we make with like for the Frazetta girls was like, whether it's like merchandise, like t-shirts or you know, of course you have to live, but then, but most of it goes back into wanting to build the Frazetta world, the Frazetta community, whether it's mm, physical right. products or, or digital products, it's all about what, what is the goal? Because I mean, like for me, I'm, I'm a, I'm a little bit like my grandfather. I don't need a whole lot. Like I don't really like to go anywhere. So, so right. money, money for me then becomes, what can I use this money for to build, build something greater? Right. Yeah, build you're building a better. future. Yeah, exactly. So it's always, it, it just, it, for that, that's what it was like an opportunity. I'm like, Oh, this is, this is a great opportunity. I didn't see it as like, I don't, I still don't see it as, I mean, yeah, there are, there are things that do look like money grabs and there are people on this NFT right. community that are just money grabbing. And again, they're, but they're, they're taking advantage of an opportunity. Like tell me, show me someone who wouldn't do it if they have offered the American you know, way. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> right. yeah. it is what it is. We're, you know, we're an exploited country of just, capitalists and sure. it is what it is this is where they were this is where we were born though. this is what we know um but but in terms of like what i was saying earlier like peaking like you know this 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 tan this intangible thing it has to be somewhere like tangible where you have like a strong online community and you can like right. the pfp is like you've seen like the 
like the board apes and like that community, like yeah. they have like incentives where you can go on the yacht club and you can do this or whatever. So right. that's what we're trying to build now with, with Frazetta is making like PFPs and making this mm. like a, a really strong community where it's like a, like experiences. So, so that's what we're moving into. We're, we're being really careful. My, like, again, like, this is what, one of the reasons I was crying. I love, I my like, nature and the environment to me it's like everything like my backyard yeah. i don't i don't spray for bugs i let bats and dragonflies and right, whatever right. wants to live <laughs> on my property can live because i'm like i'm in your home damn it yeah. so <laughs> i i'm I, you know i've been just very environmentally conscious for a long time now and that was the one thing that i had to make sure that we weren't it wasn't going to be detrimental to the environment right. um so we we really wanted to vet like who was working with us sure. and and all of that um are your so guests here guests, guests, yeah, my guests just arrived yes okay <laughs> thank you sarah so much i'll text you later you have a great afternoon and and honestly we can't thank you enough you have a wonderful yeah, day thank you i, I, I just appreciate you guys so much and thank you to all who watched and and following me and uh, just listening to me blabber i appreciate you guys no 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 um <laughs> and and uh, we'll have you on next week uh maybe awesome. like either saturday or sunday and we can do like your a secondary announcement for, for what awesome. you guys are announcing and uh we'll get to the the remaining questions awesome look i look okay. forward to that thank you so right. much sarah have bye, a great guys. day bye you bye too. okay let me well, do this. there you are <laughs> let me, sorry like hey um M mula um uh, she actually answered that question in the um the video that we did sorry i'm trying to get my camera to focus on me um she she I answered feel that very question. close up let me zoom yeah no, i know let me try this and see if this works better there like, you go <laughs> um i know right? no one needs to see it that close <laughs> she, she actually answered that question in the video that we <laughs> <laughs> it turned into an Alfred Hitchcock movie. <laughs> well, Kelsey, what did you think of that? Oh, it was fantastic. I love was... the the ambiance of that place. It looks like you could just chill and yeah, in the in the space of Frank, you know, and uh, yeah, soak it up, man. There's a lot of great pieces there. There was a bunch that we didn't even see, like the comic pages up on the wall. Yeah, uh, big giant. Uh, I don't know if they're 11 by 17 or not, you know. No, you look better, little bird out, you know. Right, right. <laughs> it's just, it, like, I don't, my camera did this last night and I had to like unplug it and plug it back in. I don't know why it does it. But, um, so, so, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I, when, when I watched the Pain with Fire, Sarah was great too. Yeah, I thought she did a great job like showing off the place. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, but in the painting with fire documentary, that was any of the scenes in the museum. You just wanted you wanted to like see what was on the walls. Oh, yeah. So it was it was really neat being able to check out all that art. Oh, I gotta go. I, you know, I gotta go there and like see up close because I think even the the phone, as good as it was, still I feel like yeah. uh, to see. You could probably see little brush hairs in it and oh, the texture sure. of the paper and where it bleeds through the paint and stuff like that. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And those little books. That was the best. That was an yeah. exclusive right here for Super Fun Sunday. Those yeah. tiny books, the story books that he did when he was, what, 12 years old? Yeah. They were I, insanely I, I, good. I, they were really good. They were really, really good. It was It was incredible. I it would that was a treat. That was a real treat. I've never yeah. seen anything like that before. I don't think that's ever been printed. I don't think anybody's ever seen that before. No, <laughs> except or, for a it, family. Unless you, went, unless you went to the museum. So it, it got right. me curious though, because she said that they had two. So so maybe we can talk her into if, if there is a second one that they have in their possession. Because I'm I'm nearly sure she said that they had two. Um, I, I would I would love to take a little peek at the second one. <laughs> yeah, next time maybe we can get her to uh, pull that other one out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I I know I promised you that we wouldn't do another live stream until I finished Crystal Planet. But would you be in <laughs> for next weekend? Well, because I know you're. Yes. Trying, the thing is, is people don't understand. They go like, oh well, Kelsey disappears. Kelsey is is working on three books at once right now, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you have to get off the internet and actually work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i've been around a lot lately you know no, but uh, know. this one we were definitely planning on this one and i wouldn't miss it but i'm also curious about the uh the news that's coming out yeah. on his actual birthday yeah and we can get the scoop on that yeah 
so 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 we'll 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 plan on next weekend and then like i said i'm gonna take a break from youtube except i'll, I'll I'm, we're gonna continue mm. to do those image the image videos though uh and you, if you want to hop in on a couple yeah. of those yeah yeah and we got one special one that uh rich yeah, was probably, able to track down that i yep, I, yep. I have not seen in a long time and i'm pretty it's excited really about it was as good as I remembered. How about for it you? It was. It was. And even better. Like, I'm actually inspired by some of it. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, he, he draws good. So, all right. I want to say thank you to everyone that came by. Definitely, please smash the like on this video and share it. You know, this is, it's a big deal. Sarah Sarah was very generous with her time. We got, we got to see the new museum. The museum literally opened Friday. Yeah, and we that's got a so tour. great looking too, man. Yeah, virtual you, tour. <laughs> well, how, how many people do you think that go to the museum get a flip through that little book? <laughs> not oh, none. It's behind a glass <laughs> case. They're not. They're not going to hand that to you and let you flip through it. <laughs> so uh, awesome. Uh, okay, so we're going to sign out, Kelsey. You hang out for a second. We'll see. Okay. Bye private room where we get a hug and kiss yeah we you know <laughs> i gotta get my cuddles for the week yeah yeah wait <laughs> hold on ready <laughs> ready all right oh yeah <laughs> i'm gonna drink my water <laughs> mm. <laughs> rich is loving that guy <laughs> mine <Coffee>. mulliger <laughs> All right, we'll see all you guys later. Have a great day. <laughs> later, <Bye>. gang. <laughs> Happy birthday for Zetta. Yeah.